Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Today we are doing a long awaited, basically year, actually it's really like 15 month review on this bag, my Kelly 28. So I do have some notes to kind of keep me on track, but we are gonna talk about just a brief reminder of how I got this bag. Secondly, we are going to talk about kind of just, you know, the anatomy of this bag, what the bag is, the dimensions, things like that. Then we're going to talk about what fits. Then we're going to talk about wear and tear. Then I'm going to tell you the pros and cons. And finally, I will tell you what I think of this bag. Do I think it's worth it? Would I buy it again? All those things. So let's get into it. So if you're new to my channel, my name is Lisa and I like to do videos on luxury handbag shoes, ready to wear, some styling videos, and I do those things from the perspective of someone who is in the middle of her life as well as someone who is mid-sized. So if that sounds like something that's interesting to you and you enjoy that type of content, I would love it if you would join us here. It really does mean a lot to a content creator to subscribe to their channel. So click the subscribe button down below and the notification bell so you know every time I upload a video. Let's get in to this beautiful bag and I'll I'll bring her up when you know I'm talking about the bag whatever but right now I'm going to start with sort of the backstory of how I got this bag. So I will link above my whole like unboxing of this bag and all that which goes into a lot more detail into how I got the bag etc but I will give you sort of the reader's digest version of how I got the bag. So I got this bag from my sales associate at the Denver Hermes Boutique. I was traveling to Denver up until the end of 2022. I was traveling to Denver once a month for business. Now, I had had previous contact with the Denver location because I had heard that they were a location that was willing to ship out things to people, even bags, because I was in a city that had absolutely no luxury shopping in it prior to moving to New York City. I was looking for somewhere where I could start kind of a purchase history. So I did buy actually a Picatin from the Denver boutique before I ever started going there regularly. But that's kind of how I initially met my sales associate was literally just calling up the store and chatting with her on the phone for like a few minutes and then they didn't have anything then and anyway texted back and forth and then I you know I would check in every couple months this is back I'm talking about in like April of 21 uh so like I said just kind of kept in contact every so often with her to see if she had a Picatin one day she did that was great she shipped it to me that was that so then I like I said took over a position that was going to require me to travel to Denver once a month, which was like awesome. Now I can actually meet this person in person. I can establish a relationship and maybe I can get a quota bag. So my journey started in October of 2021, which was the first time that I met my sales associate in person and we met for about an hour and just really got to know each other. She is just a doll. Uh, I know a couple of you actually have the same sales associate in Denver and just really hit it off with her and she was very honest with me about you know what I needed to do to get a quota bag. Not like a number but basically it was just kind of a look you need to spend some money. And she basically said, you know, however quickly you want to do it, we can work with that. Like if you want a bag next month, then <laughs> spend all the money and we can get you a bag next month. And at that point, you know, I had just gotten my Birkin in September and I thought, you know, maybe my birthday next year. So April of 2022. So like basically six, seven months after I got my Birkin, you know, that might be a nice time to get one. So I told her at that time, let's sort of shoot for that. And she was like, cool whatever. So did my thing, went, like I said, once a month to go visit her and, you know, would buy a couple things each time. I also gave her my wish list. I don't know if I gave it to her that very first time or whether it was maybe a couple months into the relationship, but this was basically the wish list I gave her. My very first choice was a, and all of these are Birkins, just FYI, not a Kelly. I had no idea. I never even tried on a Kelly. I didn't know whether I would like it or not, but I knew I loved my Birkin, so I just figured I'd stick with that. So it was a Birkin 30 in gold with palladium hardware. I 
really did not want gold hardware. I have gold hardware on my black one and I just like the way that palladium hardware looks on gold colored leather. I think it just it kind of gives it a casual air and you know the Birkin is a casual bag so I just I thought I'd rather have that and frankly I know that gold and gold is a very difficult combination or is it's, it's a very highly sought after combination so I thought well that might make it a little bit easier competing with all the other people that want a gold Birkin 30 right. My next like wish list would have been anything in the gray family. My third choice would have been anything in sort of the cream family. So those were kind of those were sort of the parameters that I gave her. The only thing I cared about hardware wise was on the gold one. Other than that, didn't really care. So that's what I let her know my wish list was. So like I said, saw her monthly and then in March we talked about that my birthday was next month and so she was going to kind of be keeping an eye out for what was coming in, etc. We had our appointment scheduled and she actually called me earlier in the day before my appointment and she said, hey, I just want to be completely transparent with you. I do not have a Birkin for you. She's like, I don't have anything coming that meets like the parameters of what you want. She did, I think, have maybe a Birkin 35 coming in gold, like it was like in August, I think she could see. But as far as like a Birkin 30 in any of the color sort of ways that I was looking for, she didn't have anything. And she said, but I do have this Kelly 28 in this color Greenmeyer. Now Greenmeyer was a new color to Hermes in 2022. So I was like, okay, well, you know, I've never tried on a Kelly. I don't know if I like a Kelly, but you know, I'm, I'm, I certainly wasn't going to say no to it over the phone. So I went into the store. She brought it out. First of all, I loved the color. I think that this particular gray is just, it's a very true gray. It's like sort of elephant gray is maybe a good description of it but you know it doesn't have a green undertone it doesn't have a blue I mean it's really a true gray um that's a pretty good representation of it there so I loved the color I love the contrast of the gold hardware with it and yeah obviously I said yes <laughs> and I'll pop a couple of pictures up here of me like trying on the bag in boutique all right, so let's talk about the anatomy of this bag or sort of, you know, the specs of this particular bag. So this is a Kelly 28, like I said, in the color Gris Meyer in Togo leather with gold hardware. And it's in the Retorn style. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. So the Retorn means that the stitches are actually on the inside. So they actually sew the bag and then they flip the bag inside out so that you get these kind of pleats in here. And it makes this style a little more relaxed than the Cellier version, which has the stitching on the outside, which makes it much more boxy. They tend to use more structured leather with Cellier bags as opposed to Togo. And like I said, it just, and it also makes, if you compare a 28 Cellier to a 28 Retorn bag, you will see that visually the 28 looks smaller, but actually carries more. Interesting, right? So anyway, dimensions, and hopefully I remember these correctly because I didn't write them all down, but obviously it's 28 across because it's a Kelly 28. I believe if I remember correctly, it's 20 centimeters, and these are in centimeters, 20 centimeters uh, to the top. I think 12, if I remember correctly, uh, across the bottom. And then the handle drop is about nine and a half or so. So that is what it looks like. Now, obviously the Kellys do come with a shoulder strap. So let me get mine out. So the straps always come in their own dust bag. This little dust bag is actually my, um, Kellys and Birkins obviously always come with a clochette and key. I never ever put mine on my bags so they just stay in their little personal dust bag. <laughs> and then this is the dust bag for the strap. So again it's got the gold hardware as you can see. Uh, I think it says Hermes. Yeah it says 
I don't know if you can see that or not. It says Hermes there on the hardware, and then also it's got a stamp on the one side of the leather Hermes Paris made in France. So I actually have a, an organizer in mind. Let me take that out so I can show you the inside of the bag. This organizer is from Mai Tai. Looks like that. It's a really nice, soft, quilted fabric. Uh, I love this organizer. I will link above the comparison video that I did for my for a Samorga, a Zumoni, a Mai Tai, and a Seven Rue Paradise. That right seven seven rp seven yeah <laughs> um i have all four types of organizers for my hermes bags so i'll link that above so you can see kind of my thoughts but anyway on the inside of the kelly oh and there are the raincoats it also comes with two raincoats so on the kelly you will see there is one zip pocket in the back and then different from the birkin a Kelly actually has the pocket divided, so there's two pockets in the front, slip pockets, instead of one big pocket like you would see on the Birkin. So that is really the only difference in the interior of a Kelly versus a Birkin, is the two slots instead of the one. Okay, so let's talk about what fits in this bag. Now, as you can see, this is really a medium-sized bag, or, or that's how I would classify it. I, I don't think of this as a large bag. To me, it's a good medium-sized everyday bag. So you see I've got some SLGs here and some, you know, things that I would normally take in my bag, and I just want to show you. But to be honest with you, I think pretty much anything that you'd want to carry outside of a laptop would fit in this bag. I mean, certainly you could fit a mini iPad in here, you might even be able to fit a regular size iPad. I'm not sure. I, I could go get mine, but I'm too lazy to do that. But anyway, let's look at some other things. So I think the biggest thing that I have here is my desk agenda. So this is about the same size, I think, as the Agenda GM. And that, as you can see, does fit in. Now... It's making it a little difficult to close. Yeah, I don't know that I would probably take that. That's probably a little too big for this, but if you have an MM size agenda, I would say that would be fine. So let's look at some kind of smaller things. This is a full size Louis Vuitton Sarah wallet in the Emprunt leather. So, you know, clearly that's gonna fit in just fine. I'll show you in just a second. Here is a sunglass case, and this is, you know, more of a chunky sunglass case that fits fine in there too. Here's my phone case. I'm gonna put that in one of the slip pockets in the front. That's a perfect size. The slip pockets are perfect for your cell phone. Um, here is, if I had a wallet, I probably would need a card holder. Here's my key, six ring key pouch from Louis Vuitton. And here, this is the basically the size of a mini pushette. My mini pushette is in my bag right now. This is actually slightly larger than the Louis Vuitton mini pushette. This is the one from Dress Up Your Purse. These are great, by the way. If you don't want to spend the money on the Louis Vuitton version, these come in quite a few different colors. Now, I have do have a link for 15% off. It's not an affiliate link. I don't make anything from it, but it gets you 15% off. So check that out if you're interested. I love this color because it's pretty similar to Rose Poupre, which is one of my all-time favorite colors. I would love a Birkin 25 in this, but it's not, they don't make it right now. So I'd have to get it on the pre-love market. But anyway, so like I said, this can kind of mimic that and that goes down in there. Um, so I'll show you what that looks like. So as you can see, I've got the wallet there. I've got the sunglasses case, the mini pochette, the key clay. I could fit my AirPods in there. There's my phone in the slot there in one of the front slots so you know and I could even right now you know I could put like a lightweight scarf in there but it you know definitely closes just fine you know it's not bulging out anywhere anything like that okay so I just popped the organizer in there I just left my phone but you can see what that looks like here is my mini pochette accessoire 
Um, here is the large phone case. Here is a snap card holder. Here is my key clay and you can see that all fits fine as well. Like I said, I wouldn't probably do a continental wallet in this, but this definitely carries everything that I need. And again, and this is the way I generally carry my Kelly is I don't do up the sangles. I just kind of let them hang here. So I basically pull in the sides so they, you know, hang a little bit lower so you can see them and then just keep that like that. And sometimes I also actually just wear it open. So I'll just like carry it, especially if I have it on the shoulder, it will be like this. So let's talk about the wear and tear. Now, I just want to set expectations here. And that is that I really have not used this bag all that much. My guesstimation, I probably wore it for a good week, maybe two weeks, like pretty much straight when I first got it, right? When you get a new bag, you tend to use it, you know, it's like your new favorite, it's your new baby, and you want to, you know, show it off, etc. Especially a quota bag. And then she went back in her dust bag, in her box. So other than, you know, those first couple weeks, I would probably say that then I've used the bag. So since let's say like May. So in, in probably about a year's time, I've used the bag maybe four to five times. I have only used it once in New York. And if you watched my five least used bags so far in 2023, I will link that up above. You know that story and maybe why I haven't used it since that time. It was a little scary. But anyway, the, my point is, is that I haven't used this a ton, okay? I, I haven't, so you would think there wouldn't really be any wear and tear. So let's take a look at it. I do, by the way, still have all of my protective stickers on there that you can see, and they're also on the feet on the bottom, which those are hard to tell. I am not going to take those off today because of the renovation. You guys, the dust in here is unbelievable. I literally dusted that little shelving unit that's behind me that has like my perfumes and stuff when I film like in our bedroom, sort of one of the other only places I can film. But right now David's in that room, he's working. So that means I have to be in the closet. <laughs> but I literally dusted that yesterday around like maybe three in the afternoon. By six o'clock, it was completely covered in dust again. It is unbelievable how much dust gets generated by this renovation project. So it doesn't seem worth it to me to take the stickers off because the hardware is just going to get dusty and I would just rather leave them on until we're done and then I can take them off. But other than that, looking, I mean, there's absolutely no corner wear. Um, the hardware, as far as scratching, because the stickers are still on it, I don't obviously really see any scratches. The only thing that might show some scratches is this post thing. I don't know what it's called. I, I do think that this, this thing, <laughs> whatever that is, has a name. I'm sure it has a name. Um, trying to look to see, you know, if there are any like scratches on it. It doesn't really look like it. I mean, I'm sure if I like got my reading glasses on and looked super close, um, you would see, but yeah, I don't, I really don't see any wear and tear on this bag at all. Again, please understand that I am fortunate enough to have quite a few luxury bags in my collection. And so I generally change out my bag pretty much daily. Sometimes I'll go two, three days wearing a particular bag, but in general, I pretty much switch out every day. So none of my bags get heavy usage. So, you know, given, like I said, that I maybe used this bag, I would say like being very generous, probably the most I have used this bag is for like the equivalent of three weeks during the 15 months that I've had it. That's, like I said, probably being generous. It probably hasn't even been that much. It it looks 
like the day I got it. It it literally looks like a brand new bag. So wear and tear, thumbs up. So let's talk about the pros and cons of this bag. First, and probably the most obvious, is that this bag does come with a shoulder strap. We'll talk about that a little more also when we get to cons, but as far as bags are concerned, this is a pro that it does have a shoulder strap because if you watched my review on my Birkin, I will also have that linked above, you will know that that's a con for the Birkin, right? It is only either hand carried or crook of the arm, depending on the size, it might only be hand carry, but you can't put that on the shoulder, or there's no shoulder strap, etc. So that is a con for the Birkin, so that makes this a pro for the Kelly. Another pro, at least for me, now some people may find this a con, is I really like the Retorn style. Now, I have never tried on the Cellier, and I am thinking about getting a dupe for the Kelly Cellier because I would like to try it and even see if it's something that I'm interested in. Not a replica, a dupe. So no branding, no anything, but something that has that outside stitching and then it's a little stiffer and to see whether I'm even interested in like, I don't think I'd want a Kelly 28 in it just because that is a little bit bigger. And I just, I think I, if I got a Kelly in the Cellier, I would want it in the 25, but then I've heard that that's kind of hard to get in and out of. So like I said, that's why I would like to try a dupe for it. But I love this Retorn. I think it's just, you know, it's got the top handle. So, you know, and the shape of it, does make it look a little more ladylike, but it's not so formal as the Cellier. The Cellier versions definitely look more ladylike and more sort of serious, if I, if you want to call it that. Definitely more formal. So I really like, like I said, for me, this is a pro having it in the Retorn, and I love the Togo leather. It's so soft, and it just, I think it's perfect for the Retorn style. My next pro is that the bag does have feet. Now, obviously, so does the Birkin, but that is definitely, uh, in from my perspective, I think a, you know, basic human right, as Gwenny would call it. I think that feet are really important on a bag, especially on a bag like this. And so I appreciate the fact that this has feet. Another pro is that it is secure, right? So because it has this turn lock here and you can keep it this way, and if you really want it secure, you know, you can put the sangles over it like how it's supposed to be and keep it really secure. I mean, I would never lock the bag, but you know what I mean? But it is a secure bag. So that to me is another pro. And then finally, my last pro is that there are multiple ways to carry this bag, right? You can carry it handheld. You can carry it in the crook of the arm. And this is a very bulky sweater. So, you know, I have absolutely no problem getting it on the crook of my arm or you can carry it shoulder carry. Now let's talk about the cons. And for me, there are only two. And the first is the one that I think a lot of people complain about, and that is the strap length. I would say for probably, again, 80%, maybe even more of the population, the current strap length on a Kelly, I'm not talking about a mini Kelly, I'm talking about a regular Kelly, isn't long enough to go cross body. So if you want to wear it cross body, you either need to get an aftermarket strap and, you know, there are lots of Etsy sellers that you can get actual, you know, Togo leather and they match the colors, etc. Or you can order other straps from Hermes, but they are incredibly expensive. So for me, if I really want to do this as a crossbody bag, I have thought about investing or buying one from Etsy. I think you know, it's going to run me around $75, something like that. I mean, they're, the Hermes ones are like a thousand just for the same leather strap, but longer. It's, it's a lot. So that to me is definitely a con that I can't wear this crossbody. I mean, I do wear it shoulder carry and that's what makes it nicer especially in a city like New York where I'm doing a lot of walking is to be able to wear it on my shoulder but ideally I would like to wear a crossbody and then the second con and again this it just you know it's a con and it's a pro but because it is more secure it does make it a little more fussy to get in and out of and really what I mean by that is that in order to especially if you're carrying this on your shoulder like this, it's 
hard to get to redo the bag. To do undo the bag is fine, but in order to redo the bag, you basically have to put your hand under it and use your other hand then to do that. If you don't do that, like I said, if you have it just like this, because of, of how your the, the strap pulls up on this flap, it you, you can't, it's like you have to like do that and that's, it's just annoying, okay? So the easiest way to do it is you need two hands, one to support the bottom of the bag and the other to then put the flap over this stem thing, whatever this is called. Somebody I'm sure will tell me in the, in the comments below what that's called. Uh, to do the bag up. So that really to me is the only other con and it's not that big of a con to me. So personally, I think that the Kelly has fewer cons for me than I think that the Birkin did, but I'd have to go back and rewatch that video <laughs> to see. But I feel like that there were more cons that I had in the list for the Birkin than I do for the Kelly. So finally, let's talk about I guess how I feel about this bag and do I think it's worth it? Would I recommend it? Would I buy it again? I think this is a beautiful bag and I, like I said, I particularly love the return style. I think that it takes a bag that could be viewed as a little more serious, as a little more relaxed because it is in the return, you know, style and in the Togo leather. I love the color. I just, I cannot tell you how much I love this gray, especially with the gold hardware. I think it looks amazing. So I think it's a beautiful bag and I think it's a very usable bag as well. Do I think it's worth the money? That obviously is subjective. You know, a lot of people would say, you know, there's no way in you know what that I would ever pay that much for a bag. I don't know what the current price is. I will try to remember to look it up and put it on the screen here. I believe it was eleven six. I think. Uh, all of my receipts are also packed as well, so I can't even look it up for you. Whether something is worth it is all relative, and it's also very personal, right? I mean, even if you are a luxury handbag lover and collector, you still might not think that this is worth it at you know, let's say it's 12 now, something like that. I still personally think that this bag is worth it. Whereas I do not think that a Chanel classic flap at over $10,000 in the medium size, or even more in the jumbo size, I do not think that that is worth it at all. I do still think that this is worth it. They 100% hold their value. They are still going for, you know, quite a bit over retail on the pre-loved market and the resale market. They've definitely come down in price on the resale market and I'm actually gonna do a video on that and especially as it relates to Hermes and you know, does it make sense to still be on the journey, that kind of thing. But you know, if you could walk into the store and just simply buy one at the current price, yes, I personally think that it's worth the money. Do I recommend it? Yes, I do. Like I said, I think it's a beautiful bag if you like the style and it's, you know, something that you would think would fit in with your lifestyle. I think it is an absolutely gorgeous bag. Would I buy it again? That's a good question. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't know. Again, I love this bag and I, I'm i not looking to sell this bag at all, but I do feel bad that I haven't used it very much. Now, granted, I haven't used my Birkin very much either, but that is going nowhere. Like that is 100% a forever bag for me. It means so much that my husband wanted to buy it for me and it has such an amazing story behind how we got it in Paris and, and all that. So that is never going to leave my collection and one of my girls will get that. Um, I sort of feel like I absolutely need to keep this bag too because then, you know, either Morgan or Hannah, whoever doesn't get the Bergen could get the Kelly. Um, I mean, I do, I do love it. It's beautiful. Um, I don't know what I would buy instead. So I, I guess I would say yes. I, if I was offered it again, yes, I would, I would take the offer. So that's my answer. So there you are. That is my review on my 
Hermes Kelly 28. I hope you found it helpful. I hope that if you are somebody who is looking to get one of these bags or are you know considering putting it on your wish list or looking for the pre on the pre-loved market for it, I, I hope my review provided some assistance to you. If you have one of these bags, I would love to hear your thoughts on yours in the comments below or if not, and you have no desire to own one of these bags, I would love to know that too. So drop a comment below and let me know your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching. Again, if you haven't subscribed, I would love it if you would do so. I'm really trying to get to the 2000 subscriber mark. And like I, as I said in the beginning, it really does mean a lot to a creator when you subscribe to their channel. And I'm about to start kind of a sporadic, I don't know if it's gonna be a series, but, but you'll see it. It'll, it probably will come out next week. Um, that I'll throw up on an odd day. So I normally upload Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So this will probably come out maybe either Tuesday or Thursday. I'm not quite sure. So like I said, make sure you have that notification bell turned on so you know when I upload. Wherever you are, I hope you are having an amazing day or evening and I will catch you in the next one. Bye guys.